Hello, my name is Charlotte Dixon and I'm an employment advisor for BMA Cymru Wales. I'm here to talk you through your role as a junior doctor. You may recall myself and my colleague Nia coming to speak to you in your medical schools in September last year with a brief overview of the contract in Wales and the 2016 contract in England. Usually, myself and my colleagues would visit your medical school again towards the end of your academic year and deliver a presentation welcoming you to life as a junior doctor. This year, as a result of COVID-19 and the likely accelerated rate of your graduation and early registration with the GMC, we felt it was essential that we speak to you directly as early as possible. I'll show you some of the details of your contract and explain how the BMA can support you as you join the medical workforce. I'll aim to cover as much information as possible throughout this talk, but if you do have any questions, either visit the BMA website or email our team of advisors who will be happy to help you. Please be aware that this talk only relates to the contract for Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And for those of you who are due to start in England, please see my colleague Claire's presentation, which can be found on our website. There will be a great many of you who will soon join the workforce, perhaps earlier than you anticipated, and at an unprecedented time for the health service. We are proud of everyone playing their part to offer patient care during the COVID-19 crisis, and we want to make it as easy as possible for you to take on these new roles. For that reason, we are waiving the remainder of your membership subscription fee for 2019-2020. You will pay nothing until the 1st of October 2020, when we officially move you to your Foundation Year One membership. For current members, you do not need to do anything to update your membership. All payments for final year students have now been suspended. If you are not a member, you can join online for free. Your new Foundation Year One membership, starting with immediate effect, entitles you to services such as contract checking, individual employment support and a range of member benefits, including our wellbeing services. I'll cover these in more detail later. In addition to these new benefits, you will have access to guidance materials and FAQs that we have created to help support you through what is an extremely challenging time for all doctors. On the BMA website, you will find a briefing page to keep up to date with the issues facing doctors during the COVID-19 pandemic and what we are doing to address them on behalf of our members. Alongside this, you will find a series of FAQ and advice pages which are regularly updated, including information about your provisional GMC registration. The BMA is the Doctors' Trade Union and Professional Association. We are the voice of the medical professional representing all doctors and medical students, locally and nationally, on the issues that affect you and supporting you throughout your careers. We are here if you experience any difficulties at work, need individual career support or want to build on your professional development. We are not an indemnity insurer and we do not deal with patient complaints, so we recommend you seek this cover in addition. Throughout this presentation, I'll be taking you through everything you need to know about your contract and how we can support you in your new role as a junior doctor. Starting with your salary, I'll touch on your basic pay and the banding supplement that make up your actual total salary. I'll then guide you through other topics covering annual leave, study and sick leave. Finally, I'll show you a few things that will be useful to you throughout this period of transition, where you can get support and how our team can help. We will start with your pay as a foundation doctor. Your total pay is made up of two payments – basic pay and banding. I'll talk about banding later. First, let's look at your basic pay. Basic pay is based on 40 hours a week between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. The salaries shown on the slide represent the starting points and the minimum of scale. You will progress to the next point in the scale once you reach the next grade, for example, from F1 to F2. There are three points on the F1 and F2 pay scale and your pay will increase with time served. In addition to moving up the pay scale, all doctors usually receive an annual inflationary pay rise in April of each year, which is decided by the doctor and dentist review body. 
as you can appreciate, due to the COVID-19, publication of this year's increase amount has been postponed, but should be backdated once it has been agreed. However, as a junior doctor, you will likely work more than 40 hours per week and work out of hours. This is covered by the banding. Banding recognises the work that is undertaken over and above the basic 40 hours and also recognises frequency of working and social hours, which is outside the basic 7am to 7pm, for example, longer days, nights and weekends. The banding your rotor attracts should be issued to you before you start your rotation and usually at the beginning of each year in your training. As you can see from the slide, the banding increases with the number of hours the rotor has and the more unsociable the hours. It is not immediately apparent when looking at a rotor what banding the rotor attracts. As you progress through training, you may start to identify banding from the rotors you work. There are very few rotors that are banned to because such rotors breach the European Working Time Directive rules. Band 3 is only paid when the rotor is non-compliant with the protections that the contract provides for junior doctors in Wales. It was introduced as a punitive measure to ensure employers adhered to safe working hours and breaks. Breaches can occur when a shift is longer than the maximum limit or rest is not being achieved on 75% of occasions. In your foundation years, you will complete three four-month placements, each with their own rotor and therefore attracting its own banding. Within a year, you may have three different bandings, which will obviously impact financial planning and something for you to bear in mind. These examples show how pay is calculated, adding together the basic pay and the banding the rotor attracts. The above examples are both based on working between 40 to 48 hours a week with a medium intensity, which equates to a band 1B. These links provide further information regarding banding and allows for you to check your rotor to make sure the banding is correct. Some of these links are for members only as they require a password, but there is general information available on our website. Trainees may want to apply for part-time training, known as less than full-time, for a number of reasons, such as childcare or their health. If you wish to apply, you should speak with the Flexible Training Advisor from Health Education and Improvement Wales, HIW, and there are applications and procedures you will need to follow. Less than full-time training pay arrangements are a little more complicated and are dependent on the hours that are worked, and there are four banding supplements. There are few posts where juniors work 40 hours per week and do not work any antisocial hours. These are known as unbanded posts. Whilst this is unusual, many academic posts are like this, so something for you to be aware of. As an F1, if you work in an unbanded post, you are entitled to a 5% supplement of your basic salary. There are two instruments that govern your hours of work. Your contract, the 2002 Terms and Conditions, which is referred to as the New Deal, and the European Working Time Directive, which is European legislation that applies across Europe. As they both apply simultaneously, there is sometimes an overlap between the two, but whatever is most beneficial to you will apply. As a foundation doctor, you will most likely be working a full shift, which are capped 14 hours a day. There are different provisions for partial shifts and on call shifts. There is a limit on the maximum number of continuous duty days for all working arrangements of 13 days. The European Working Time Directive imposes a limit of no more than 48 hours a week over a reference period of 26 weeks for doctors. You are able to decide to opt out of this limit, which should always be in writing and should be voluntary. You should not receive any undue pressure to agree to this. If you do decide to opt out of this working limit, you are able to opt back in by giving your employer written notice of three months. In any event, the 2002 contract provides that you can only opt out to work a maximum of 56 hours a week. The 2002 contract also provides for a break of 30 minutes after four hours of working. 
This is an enhanced position to the European Working Time Directive, which only allows for a 20-minute break after six hours worked. This break must be continuous for 30 minutes and uninterrupted, for example, by a bleep. This is known as a natural break and must always count towards your total working time. How do you know if you're being paid the right band in? The only way to address this is via a process called monitoring. Monitoring should take place every six months, or you do have the right to request for monitoring if you are concerned that your current band in does not reflect the hours that you work. Such a request must be made in writing. Monitoring should take place at a representative time and should reflect your normal working hours. In order for the monitoring to be valid and successful, there has to be a 75% response rate for doctors on the rota and a 75% response rate for the duty periods. Monitoring works best when you work as a team with your colleagues and all doctors submit their data. The BMA has recently supported junior doctors in successful legal action against a health board who tried to substitute data for juniors who were absent or rota gaps. This can affect the data and so we advise that you keep in contact with your colleagues about the results and keep your own diaries outside of the monitoring period. You must monitor your hours accurately. Technically, you are in breach of contract if you don't. It can never be detrimental to an individual to monitor as there are pay protection provisions in place, but it can have significant advantages and it can all be done online. Health boards will sometimes state that if you work beyond your contracted hours, the monitoring return must be signed off by your consultant, which can be intimidating. Also, if you stay behind to finish off ward work or results work, the health board will often exclude this from monitoring as it was seen as your choice to stay behind. We recommend that you keep a note of any incidences such as this. If you are concerned about this and need support, please contact our first point of contact as a first step before taking any action. Please be advised that there is no requirement for consultants to sign diary cards in the terms and conditions of service. Your employer should not ask you to cover for absent colleagues on a long-term basis. There are specific circumstances where you may legitimately be asked to cover the occasional brief absence of colleagues as well as in exceptional emergency scenarios and sick colleagues will normally be covered only for short periods of absence. You are usually compensated via time off in lieu or extra pay on these occasions. There are not many health boards that provide locum cover for your leave and it is usually covered amongst internal staff. This is known as prospective cover and is added to your hours when compiling your rota. If there are gaps in your rota, it is your responsibility to raise this and the health board's responsibility to fill those gaps. You can agree to work as an internal locum so long as working hours do not breach the working time directive if you have not opted out or new deal requirements. You should always agree in writing how you will be compensated in advance. It is really important to keep an eye on your payslip and understand the different elements. We deal with a number of cases of under and over payments and the earlier these are picked up, the better. If you are required to travel for work purposes, then you may be entitled to mileage allowance and other expenses associated with this. Junior doctors are entitled to removal expenses for training purposes. Doctors who have to move during a rotational training appointment can choose to travel the greater distance between their home and their place of work on a daily basis instead of moving house. The mileage that may be paid under these circumstances is the difference between the mileage from home to your designated base place of work and the mileage from home to the new place of work. A new relocation reimbursement policy for doctors and dentists in training was agreed in 2019 between HIW, BMA Cymru Wales and NHS Wales Shared Services Partnership and it can be found on the HIW website. We advise that you keep copies of all contracts and communication you receive regarding any of the above as this will help with any queries regarding the information. I'll now go through some of the details I think will be most important to you at this time. 
Your annual leave year runs from the start date of your appointment and you will be entitled to between five to six weeks, depending on your grade. There are a further two days known previously as statutory or stat days, which are available. These may either be specified by your employer or converted into annual leave. If you are scheduled to work a bank holiday, you are entitled to a day back in lieu. If you have been working for between 4 and 12 months, you are entitled to one month's full pay sick pay, followed by two months half pay. If you are still unable to work after this period, your income from your NHS employer will be based on statutory sick pay, SSP, and then nil. The current circumstances regarding COVID-19 may vary from this and we would advise that you refer to the FAQs on our website for further up-to-date guidance. For Foundation Year 1, study leave will take the form of regular scheduled teaching or training sessions as agreed locally. For Foundation Year 2 and above, you are entitled to 30 days of study leave per year. Study leave should not be used by employers for statutory and mandatory training that you are required to undertake in order to work in that health board or department. As a BMA member, you have a wealth of services and benefits. Make sure you take advantage of everything your membership offers. To support your career, we have 230 specialist advisors, including dedicated advisors in Wales, to offer you individual employment advice. In 2019, we handled over 120,000 inquiries from members and resolved over 80% of all member cases within the first three months. You can access support and advice 8am to 8pm, Monday to Friday and 9 to 5 on Saturday. You will shortly be receiving a new contract outlining the terms and conditions of your new role. We recommend that you take advantage of our free contract check-in service before you sign on the dotted line. 20% of the contracts we checked in 2019 deviated from the national model and given the complexities of your new role, this service may save you time, money and necessary stress. You can send your contract to us and our expert team will send it back to you with any comments within five working days. We are also a professional association and we help our members develop their careers with world-class learning resources to support their development. Learning resources include a weekly copy of the BMJ magazine and the monthly Doctor magazine. You'll have full access to BMJ e-learning, webinars, workshops and access to the BMA library. BMA membership resources can also help with your portfolio, specialty interview skills and CV writing workshops. As I said earlier, these are exceptional times for the health service and as new doctors, you may find yourself experiencing additional pressures, stress or anxiety as you enter the workforce. If at any time you need support or would like to speak to somebody in confidence, please know that we are here for you. Our BMA Wellbeing Support Services are open 24-7 to all doctors and medical students. You will have the choice of speaking to a counsellor or another doctor who you can contact for peer support. Visit bma.org.uk or call 0330 123 1245. The services are confidential and free of charge. Before you start working on a junior doctor contract, there are four things you need to do to cover yourselves. If you aren't already a member of the BMA, join now and pay nothing until October the 1st. We can only support our members. To ensure you're receiving the most relevant information, please update your details and sign up for the communications you want to receive. Get your contract and rotor details checked for free as part of your membership. Take a look at the membership benefits available to you. Thank you.